Go ahead. Good afternoon. I'm Cindy Forrester. I'm the MPP from the Welland Riding, and I'd like to introduce uh, Taras Natashak, who is the Labour critic and the member from Essex for the New Democratic Party. And also on my right is Dan Wixon, president of CEP Local 425G, and Everett Tremblay, yes. a rank and file member from uh, CEP, uh, and they are um, former workers of Virtus Communications. We're here today to actually talk about severance issues uh, in this province. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, Virtus is a US-based printing company that actually closed up shop uh, in January of this year. And uh, the workforce is here today to talk about the fact that they are not getting any severance pay, uh, although they're entitled to millions of dollars. Um, because this company was a US-based company and it declared bankruptcy in the US, uh, they are not entitled to uh, employment standard severance under Ontario legislation. They're being denied uh, severance under a federal program. Uh, and they're even being denied the right to proceed under the Ontario Labour Relations Act for arbitration to, in some way, secure those severance dollars. Uh, so it's like triple jeopardy, uh, actually, for these workers in this province. Uh, it's not right. This uh, shouldn't be happening. Uh, foreign companies who actually open businesses here in Canada should be obliged to the legislation that protects workers in this province and across Canada. So I'm going to turn it over to Taras as our Labour critic for a couple of minutes uh, before we actually hear f directly from the workers. Thank you, Cindy, and I want to thank the workers that are here today and representatives from CEP. Um, obviously, there <clears throat> there is a glaring gap in our Employment Standards Act, uh, specifically when it comes to the province's ability to enforce measures that would recoup um, the 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 monies that are owed to these workers. Uh, what we're dealing with here, and what we've heard in the media uh, lately, a, a lot about uh, foreign temporary temporary workers. We're dealing with foreign temporary owners and companies who are uh, skirting provincial and federal legislation, uh, using bankruptcy protection under uh, U.S. jurisdiction to ultimately uh, subvert the law here in this province and to uh, not uh, be obliged to pay out workers uh, their due. Uh, so so it's, it's important that uh, people in Ontario not only become aware of what has happened specifically here with the Virtus workers, but also the, the cautionary tale as uh, more and more employment and more and more uh, companies uh, that are foreign-based set up shop in Canada, that, uh, that this possibly could be uh, a, a situation or a scenario that plays out around the province. <clears throat> we called on the government today to, uh, to take some immediate measures. Uh, through uh, not only you know uh, discussing the the situation with their provincial or federal partners, but also enforcing uh, the standards and the and the act under the Employment Standards Act. Uh, there are there are some immediate uh, things that they could do to apply pressure and to to halt these. We're calling on them to do that uh, and to not simply uh, be at the uh, at the uh, bequest of uh, U.S. bankruptcy legislation. This isn't fair. This is a company that uh, was profitable in. Ontario, one that uh, certainly uh, provided good, tangible jobs in uh, in that region, uh, but yet because uh, because they were able to uh, navigate U.S. Uh, U.S. bankruptcy laws and protection, uh, ultimately it's Canadian and Ontario workers uh, that are suffering. Uh, we don't think it's right as as the Ontario New Democratic Party, and we also don't think. Uh, that Ontarians think it's right. We actually know that Ontarians uh, would be supportive, certainly, of ensuring that uh, workers are, are given the protection, the full protection, under the Employment Standards Act, and that's what we are ultimately here uh, calling for today. So I thank, again, the workers, the representatives from CEP who are here standing up for those workers uh, and demanding the province uh, take immediate action. Thank you, Truss. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan. I'm going to read a, a brief summary about our bankruptcy. Virtus is a U.S.-based printing company with printing facilities throughout North America, including one facility in Canada, Fort Erie, the birthplace of Tim Hudak. Virtus is not incorporated in Canada. The Fort Erie facility is owned by Virtus and associated companies in the United States. 
In October 2012, Virtus filed for bankruptcy under Chapter 11 U.S. Bankruptcy Code for the third time in 10 years. They did so with the Stocking Horse Agreement with Quad Graphics, another U.S.-based printing company that has a sweetheart deal with Transcontinental. In December of 2012, a U.S. court approved the sale of Virtus to Quad under the terms of the Quad Agreement. Quad acquired all Virtus assets, including all of the Fort Erie assets, except the real property, which Virtus is now trying to sell. It's valued at about $3 million. On January 14th, the sale of these companies closed. On January 16th, Virtus announced a closure of the Fort Erie plant and terminating all 100 plus employees that day. Virtus has re refused to pay termination or severance pay to their Fort Erie employees, indicating they were precluded from doing so by U.S. bankruptcy law. The CEP advised Virtus that, US, that the U.S. law did not apply in Canada and did not exempt the company from complying with their Canadian legal obligations. However, the company did not respond to this. The Fort Erie employees claims a total of $2.7 million with the U.S. bankruptcy trustee. In addition, the CEP filed a grievance under the collective agreement. Although Virtus was bankrupt in the U.S., they were not bankrupt in Canada, but still the CEP members were not entitled to federal wage earner protection program benefits. This is clearly unfair and in inconsistent with the intent of WEP. In March 2013, days before the scheduled collective agreement arbitration, Virtus applied for a foreign bankruptcy recognition under the Canadian CCAA, including a request for stay of proceedings. That court order was granted and scheduled arbitrations were canceled. Everyone, including local MP Rob Nicholson, assumed that CEP members would now be eligible for WEP benefits. However, an information officer appointed under the CCAA Foreign Bankruptcy Recognition Order has denied this, indicating that no bankruptcy or receivership order has been issued in Canada, thus making Virtus the first company in Canada to be a little pregnant. The WEP is intended to cover situations of bankruptcy or receivership. Normally this means that an order must be made by a Canadian court under the Canadian Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act. However, here we have a situation where the court order is recognizing not a Canadian bankruptcy, but a U.S. bankruptcy. It is clearly unfair and inconsistent with the intent of WEP. We are here, our, our only hope of dignity right now is to get this WEP fund, which is a tenth of our severance and termination pay. Well, we, we truly would like to get the full severance and termination pay, but I don't. <coughs> Bless you. <Excuse> me. <clears throat> but in this legal loophole we're stuck in, or being hung by, I don't see that happening. So our last shot of dignity after giving our adult lives to this company is a WEP fund. If the government would make these companies pay severance and termination pay, that would equal with the uh, office employees about $3 million. The government would have taken a million dollars in taxes out of that. So they have a vested interest in employees getting severance and termination pay. If we get the WEP fund, the government will have to pay out over $400,000 to us out of, out of taxpayers' pockets. The company should be paying us our severance and termination pay, and the government shouldn't be on the hook for $400,000. And like I said, if, they, if we got the full amount of severance and termination pay, the government would take about a million dollars in taxes. So they could either have a million dollars or pay out $400,000. It's not very logical. Thank you. Okay, and I'd like to now um, have Everett Trombley say a few words. Well, I, I'm just going to speak for uh, about the 100 employees that I've just worked with for 20 to 25, even 30 years. And, uh, like, we don't know where to go with this. Um, we're asking the government to help us out. Um, there's the way certain laws are written and the way it's been explained to us. Um, all we're entitled to is the WEP program. And being a little guy and not being able to afford lawyers and everything like that, we're asking the government to step in and get us, I want 
the money that they owe us, and I'm speaking for all the workers, we would like the severance and uh, termination pay that we are entitled to under Canadian laws. Um, other than that, that's it. I was kind of here to support Dan and the union, and uh, it's not a big union issue at all anymore. This is law, and uh, we would like to get that support and do something. If I don't get what I deserve today for working for 29 years, maybe I can change it for uh, future generations, my kids, somebody else's kids. But we need to start action now and stop this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dan, did you want to say uh, anything no, else at this point? Well, I would like to, to close by just making uh, a couple of points. Um, we as New Democrats in the Ontario New Democrats um, are, the, are the party that support the workers uh, in this province. And uh, when we were in government between 90 and 19, 1990 and 1995, we actually had worker protection legislation. Uh, and it was shortly uh, after the Harris government took power in 1995 that uh, that legislation was repealed. So in those situations, uh, if workers had their uh, employment severed and the company filed bankruptcy, the government um, would pay the severance and then they would go after the company companies to actually make up that severance. But as I say, uh, it was repealed. The, the other piece that we didn't really talk about here today was that in, ish, in cases of bankruptcy, uh, workers are always at the bottom of the pecking order uh, as uh, secured creditors. Uh, and that just isn't fair. I mean, these um, are workers that invest uh, many, many years um, gaining profits for their employers and for their shareholders. And at the end of the day, they're at the bottom of that of uh, the heap um, without uh, the financial ability to actually fight for themselves. So um, having said that, uh, the New Democratic Party um, of Ontario, the Ontario NDP, will be introducing a bill uh, during uh, this term on worker protection. Um, we are uh, currently working with our staff to develop that legislation, but we will be bringing it forward uh, sometime during this session. Uh, I want to uh, uh, thank CEP, uh, Dan and Everett and uh, their workers uh, from the former Virtus Communications for being here today to highlight this very important issue that affects not only them, but every year, you know, there are numerous companies uh, that walk away from their workers, um, severance pay, benefits, uh, vacation pay. Uh, it's not right. And as a government, we need to do something to ensure that the laws in Ontario, the laws in Canada are complied with. Taras, any final comments? Uh, simply, uh, again, to reiterate that, that there is a role here for the provincial government and the Minister of Labour to, uh, to fully enforce the Employment Standards Act, to, to go after uh, the Virtus uh, company for what is owed to these workers. Uh, if not, it sets a dangerous precedent for all workers who are currently uh, employed by uh, a, a multinational or, or a U.S. conglomerate. Uh, and that makes up, again, the, a, a large majority of the companies that uh, are found in this province. Uh, so, you know, it, it, certainly we see uh, the, the cautionary tale that has happened to these 100 employees uh, in, in, in Fort Erie. We need to ensure that this doesn't happen to any other, uh, any other workers in this province. It's right, uh, it's just, and uh, it's within our law, within our, our provincial jurisdiction to, to enforce it. Uh, so again, I, I, I applaud uh, those uh, workers for standing up and fighting. I know that uh, they're at their wits' end. Uh, this should never have happened to them, uh, but uh, we stand with them today to, to demand that the government uh, play its role to ensure that these workers receive fairness.